God wants us to talk, tell and share of the works He has done. In this message, we share five simple yet powerful insights on why we should testify often to what the Lord has done in our lives. All right, why don't we stand up to our feet, make our declaration, then we will spend some time in, in God's Word to this morning. So if you brought your Bibles, please hold it high up in the air. Uh, let's say this out loud, bold and strong. This is God's Word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing. To many people, I believe his word, I receive his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master, and to him, I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may shake hands, please, with the people around you. Greet them, share the, give them your name, and you may be seated. All right, are you ready for some good news? All right, we got some, a few testimonies, not many. Uh, i just probably quickly share a few testimonies that came in uh, this past week. This one came into the church app. In fact, it came just yesterday, so a week later. Remember last Sunday we prayed for people with hearing problems? Uh, so here was a lady who sent this, she sent this a week later, meaning it's been verified for at least a week. Uh, she said, and she was just visiting us. She said last Sunday I was visiting the church. Uh, she had a vertigo problem related to her inner ear condition. So uh, she always, you know, head was always heavy. There was pain. There was dizziness. She couldn't stand. But that that is last Sunday. She says, "Praise God! I was healed of that condition when we prayed. My for, uh, and and I felt the heaviness lift, the fullness of feeling in the ear gone, and I knew God had healed me. And God is good all the time. Amen." Praise God for that. Uh, here's another one. Uh, you know, last Sunday we, uh, we, we shared about that testimony about Anand and Kavita and the, and the financial miracle God gave them. So there's somebody sitting in the service who was listening to that testimony. So she sent this in by email. She said, last Sunday during the service, I was listening to the testimonies, specifically the ones who were praying for their financial problem and uh, on Monday and how God blessed them and fulfilled their needs between that 3 to 5 p.m. in the evening with bulk purchase. So she says, while I was listening to this, she said, I was praying to Jesus and I said, you are the God who loves his people. You provide for the needs no matter what. And, uh, and she said uh, she had problems with her, uh, uh, her, her land which was partially occupied by the builder. And so she was praying about it. They were trying to sell the land for the last few years. They were trying to get this sorted out. But she was praying. As she was hearing this testimony, she was praying. And then this was, I'm trying to find a video. This was Thursday, I think it was. She said, today I got the news that the land we were trying to sell from the past few years was finalized today. We were in financial crisis, and God has helped us come out of that. Amen. Amen. This is so amazing because she was hearing somebody else's testimony, and she said, that's for me too. And God worked in her life. This morning, I want to just share with us about the power of testimony. What is the power that is released? When you and I share our testimony, our story, something that God has done. It may be small, it may be any kind of miracle. What happens when we share our testimony? So we're going to spend some time talking or learning about the power of testimony. I want to start off in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. 
where the Lord Jesus said that we are going to be his witnesses. You and I are familiar with this verse when Jesus said, you will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses to the uttermost parts of the earth. So you and I are called to be witnesses. So say this with me, I'm a witness. I say it like you mean it. I'm a witness. You and I are witnesses for Jesus. Now, a witness has the option. I mean, I, I guess a witness does not have the option to remain silent. If you remain silent, you're not a witness. I mean, of course, they may say you have the option to remain silent or to speak, but anything you say will be held against you. But as a witness, you don't have the option to remain silent because if you remain silent and you're saying nothing, you're bearing no witness. So witness has no option of remaining silent. You've got to say something. Jesus said, you are my witnesses. And in order to aid you and me being his witnesses, he also said, you're going to receive power. So you're not only going to be a witness, but you're going to have empowering to validate your witness, you're going to have empowering to produce proof or give evidence to that witness that you bear. So that's where the power of the Holy Spirit comes in and is so important for you and me. That, that, that word witness, witness in Acts 1.8 in the Greek is interesting. It's the Greek word martus. It's used in several different contexts. In a legal sense, uh, it's used to those people who testify in the court of law. Uh, it's also used for people who have witnessed a certain event, maybe a game, a contest, a sporting event, and then they say what they saw. It's also used in that. But it's, it's also used in a sense of those who validate, validate the genuineness of their faith by becoming martyrs. So that word actually, martyrs, gives the English word martyr. That means they are so convinced of what they believe, they're willing to die for it. So Jesus said, and you shall be my martyrs. Doesn't mean you have to die, but that's the kind of witness you and I are called to bear. That means I'm so convinced about what I believe about Jesus Christ that if need be, I'm willing to put my life on the line. I'm willing to die for it. You will be my witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So you and I are witnesses. Witnesses of what the Lord has done in our lives. And one of the simplest ways that you and I can be witnesses is just to tell your own story. What has the Lord done for you? It's like the blind man. He simply said, once I was blind, now I see. When people question him about Jesus, I mean, the man who healed you, is he the Messiah? Is he Jesus? Hey, I don't know all the technical terms. One thing I know, once I was blind, now I see. The only difference is he put his hands on me. He did something to me. It changed me. So to be a witness really is not very complicated. Just tell what God has done for you. That's what he's done for you. He's healed you. He's delivered you. Set you free. Done something for you. Testify to it. Say it. Tell it. Talk about it. This is what he's done for me. Oh, this is the meaning, the purpose, the direction. This is how he's fixed my life. Just say what the Lord has done. So I want to just bear upon our hearts the power of testimony, the importance of testifying to what God has done for you and me. So even if it's something small, what can we expect? What is it all about when we testify, when we just talk about the works of the Lord. I want to just share five things, five insights we see in Scripture. Number one, when we testify, we magnify, glorify, and exalt the Lord. You know, this is a way to tell God, God, I'm grateful to you. God, I'm making my boast in you. God, I'm exalting you. I'm magnifying you. When we just say what he has done for us, it's a way to magnify the Lord. It's a way to exalt the Lord. It's a way to Make his name uh, known and his fame great. Just a couple of verses here. Psalm 105, verse 1 and 2. 
It says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Thanksgiving week was last week for those of you. Uh, oh, sorry. We don't do it here, but you know, it's a big deal in the U.S. And it's a time of the year when we give thanks to God. Just say, God, thank you for everything you've done. The Bible tells us here, give thanks to the Lord. How do you do it? One of the ways, make known his deeds among the people. Verse 2, sing to him, sing psalm with psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Just talk about it. Chit chat about it. Talk of all his wondrous works. This is what God has done. Hey, this is what happened. Psalm 9, verses 1 and 2. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of your marvelous works. I will tell people of the works you've done. I will tell them. This is what God did. It may be a small thing, maybe a big thing, but tell of his marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. So the first thing that happens, when you just talk about his works, when you tell somebody, uh, this is what God did for me. It may be an answer to prayer. Maybe a change in something, situation. We tell them, you are magnifying the Lord. You are praising God. You are glorifying Him. You are exalting Him. And, and, and you don't have necessarily have to tell another believer. It says, make known His deeds among the peoples, among anybody. Anyone. Even a non-Christian. Tell them, this is what God has done in my life. This is what He's done for me. Just talk to them. You are glorifying, exalting the Lord. Now, I just want to mention here uh, that, you know, sometimes when you hear, and this is just a side note, it's not part of the main message. That sometimes when you hear people testify, you're wondering, whom are they glorifying, God or themselves? <laughs> so that's why we're a little careful. We don't just let anybody come on the mic, uh, take the mic and start testifying. Because, uh, unfortunately, you've just seen too many uh, bad examples where uh, people just talk, you know, they talk for five minutes about themselves and five seconds about the Lord. Praise the Lord, you know. So, hey, just be a little careful that when you and I testify, let it be genuine. Let it be about the Lord. And this is what Jesus said in John 7 and verse 18. He said, he who, speaks, uh, he who speaks of himself, he seeks his own glory. But he who uh, seeks the glory of the one who sent him, he is true. And there is no unrighteousness in him. If you speak of yourself, you're seeking your own glory. But when you seek the glory of the one who sent you, Lord, I'm saying this because I want you to be glorified. Nothing about me, God. He says, then you are a true witness. And there is no unrighteousness in you. Or you can flip it around and say it like this. You could say, to the extent that I seek glory to myself, to that extent I'm a false witness. And to that extent there is sin in me. Most of us have a 50-50 deal with God. God, 50% to you, glory, 50% me. That means 50% there is sin in you and 50% there you're a false witness. To the extent that I seek glory for myself, to that extent there is sin in me and I'm a false witness. So get rid of all of that. Say, God, I, I'm just sharing this because I want to boast about you. I just want to make my boast in you. I just want people to know how good you are, how great you are. I want to exalt you. I want to praise you. I want to magnify you before people. So you may be sitting with your friend and your friend may be, you know, just saying, hey, I'm going through a very hard time. And he say, hey, you know, I want to tell you something. I was going through a hard time too at some point in my life. Or I had this and this problem. But I prayed to Jesus or there were some people who had prayed for me, whatever the situation was. And things changed. The Lord Jesus did this for me. That's all. It's as simple as that. I was going through it myself. He brought me out. You are testifying. And I'm just saying that little simple story that you experience personally, you're exalting him. You're glorifying him. You're magnifying him. Amen? The second thing, thing that happens when you and I testify is that we create a remembrance and a memorial when we testify. You know, God wants us to remember the things He has done for our lives. So time and, and time and time, I just sit down, I just recall, God, 
You've done that in the past. I, I recall the times of God's amazing provision in our lives. I recall the times when God did amazing things. I recall that even now what God is doing in our midst. And say, God, you're doing this. So it's, ama it's so amazing. God, thank you. And when we speak of his works, we are creating a remembrance, a memorial when we testify. And when you look at the Bible in the Old Testament especially, and even the New Testament, the Lord instituted certain practices. You may almost call it rituals, but they were feasts. They were observances that people did over and over and over again every year. And the purpose was, I want you to remember. So he instituted, like for the people of Israel, seven major feasts. And every year, they would do the same thing over and over and over again. They didn't say, Lord, we celebrated last year. It's over. No. Again, a new year. Again, do the same feast. Again, celebrate all the seven feasts over and over again. Why? I want you to constantly remember what God has done in your life. Don't forget. Feast of the Passover. Yeah, I remember. You were slaves in Egypt. But how God brought you out. Remember those things. Right? And so like that, several feasts, each one just reminding them, God has done this in your life. Don't forget God's faithfulness, God's goodness. So when we testify, when we talk about it, it may have been something five years ago. It may have been something 10 years ago. It may be 20 years ago. But you are reminding yourself, hey, God's been good. Don't forget. I was in a situation like that. God came through. God worked this out in my life. You are creating a memorial. You're creating a remembrance. In fact, when you look at the tabernacle and God told them to make a box, a wooden box, and he called it the Ark of Testimony. Later on, it came to be called the Ark of the Covenant, but its original name was Testimony. The word testimony there simply means witness. This Ark is a witness. Inside the Ark, there were three items. There was a golden pot that had manna in it, always reminding people. Now, they couldn't see it, but they knew it was in there. And was always reminding them, hey, God provided for you 40 years. Don't forget. Manna. Inside the pot was Aaron's rod that budded. It always reminded people that, hey, God has his leaders among you. And he backs them up. Aaron's rod that budded. And then there were the tablets of stone with other ten commandments. God has given his word to you. The ark of testimony. The ark was a constant memorial reminding his people of his provision, his appointed leadership, and his given word to the people. Always. And then he said, on that ark is a place where there is mercy and where I will speak to you. On the ark was a mercy seat, the place of mercy. And there I will speak to you. There was a voice of God. So what do we learn? That when we testify, when we bring to remembrance the works of God, when we remember the things God has done for us, the place of testimony is the place of God's mercy and it's a place of where you hear the voice of God and experience the presence of God. Every time you bring up, a, bring up a memory of God's works in your life, you're creating an environment of God's mercy, God's presence, and God's voice. Are you with me? You're stepping into that again and again and again. And God wants us to do that. He wants us to remember His goodness in the past. Hey, remember I provided for you. Remember how I brought you out. You messed up. You found your feet in a net, but I brought you out. You were in a tight situation, but I came through. I gave you favor. I took care of you. I healed you. I delivered you. Remember those things. It creates a memorial. And this is so important, you know, that uh, in Psalm 77, we see a situation the psalmist was in that you and I may all find ourselves time and time again. We'll just read that passage, Psalm 77, verse 1 to 12. The psalmist said, I cried out to God with my voice, to God with my voice. And he gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. So he was in a very troubled situation. He's crying out to God. Verse 3, I remembered God and was troubled. I complained. Anybody complained anytime? So the psalmist is complaining. God, what a mess. I mean, what's happening to me? Why all these problems? What's going on? I complained to God. My spirit was overwhelmed. Anybody felt, feel overwhelmed? That's how he felt. God, this is too much. I can't handle it. 
Verse 4, you hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. So now he's going traveling back in time. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate within my heart and my spirit makes diligent search. Now I am scanning my history with God. What has God done for me in the past? Verse 7, will the Lord cast off forever? Will he be favorable no more? Has his mercy ceased forever? Has his promises failed forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? I mean, all, he's adding all these questions. I know none of us have had any questions about God. Or probably we've had many. Something like this. God, have you forgotten to be good to me? I mean, you're good to Joe and Mary. You've forgotten me. God, where are you? Why has this happened to me? Same questions he's having. And he's searching. But what does he do? Verse 10. And I said, this is my anguish. But I will remember. Everybody say remember. Say it again. Remember. So what does the psalmist do? Well, he's having all of this. He says, this is what I'm going to do. I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I mean, I will remember the years when God stretched out his right hand. When God did some great things in my life. He says, verse 11, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I'll remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. God, right now, I'm troubled, I'm overwhelmed, I'm complaining, I have lots of questions, but I will remember. I'll go back in time. Remember the days of the right hand of the Most High. The days when God did good things. The days when God stretched out His hands. When He did amazing, I will remember those works. So, it's so important to remember God's goodness in your life. Amen. It's uh, remembering the memorial of those compassions, those mercies that never fail. It's so important for all of us to stay encouraged in those troubled times. How do you stay encouraged? Remember. Remember the works of God. Talk about it. Tell yourself about it. Tell others about it. Hey, God did this in my life. God did that. Remember the works of God. Yesterday, spending some time with the young people, our youth leaders, and I shared this passage with them from Judges chapter 2, verse 7 and 10. We'll read those verses. Verse 7, Judges chapter 2, verse 7. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua who had seen all the great works of the Lord which he had done for Israel. Verse 10. So then the next few verses says Joshua died, the elders died. Verse 10. When all the generation had been gathered to their fathers, in other words, they all passed away, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. So, Moses handed off to Joshua. Joshua brought the people into the land of promise. They had battles. They won great victories. They conquered the land, possessed the land, settled in the land. And in the days of Joshua and the days of the leaders of, uh, of his time, they all followed God. But when they went away, a generation came who did not know the works of the Lord. So I told our young people, we are having youth ministry not just to entertain the youth, but you've got to receive the revelation and the anointing that God has given to the previous generation. And you've got to steward it in your generation and pass it on to the generations that come after you. Amen. We cannot afford to have a generation come after us who do not know the works of the Lord. So that's why we've got to talk. Tell a neighbor, talk. Got to talk. Tell your children about what God has done in your life. 
Amen. Tell your children what God has done in your life. Talk to them. So I want to encourage you, all of us, have family time. If you're single, still have it. Just you and God. <laughs> I'm talking to married people, family people. Get your family together. Please try to do it every day. If you can't do it every day, at least as often as you can, every week. Get your family together. Read the words. If you're high tech, use the church app. <laughs> five minute devotion. Doesn't take much time, just five minutes. Use that if you want. Or just read the Bible. Whatever works for you and your family. And then to read the Bible, let them know who God is, what God has done. And then talk about what God has done in your life. Talk to your children. Tell them. You don't want in a generation to rise up that does not know the works of the Lord. No. It's not Pastor Selena's job. It's You have to do it at home. They have to hear the works of God. Amen. Talk about it. The works of the Lord. And in church, we talk about it. We want to make sure that a generation that comes after us knows the works of the Lord. That they, they are not empty. They don't come up as strangers saying, no, we don't know what, what is the Holy Spirit. No, they need to know. They need to know the truth. Amen. And in Psalm 78, let's read this passage here. God says to his people in Psalm 78, verse 2 through 7, I will open my mouth in a parable of utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from, our, from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and he appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. That the generation to come might know them. The children who would be born. That they may arise and declare them to their children. That they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. But keep his commandments. So God said, look, I want you to do something. I want you to talk about my works to your children. So when they rise up, they will talk about those works to their children. Talk about it at home. The works of God. The goodness of God. Amen? Talk about this. Get them together. Anything. What God has done in your life. As occasion arises. Hey, share this. Story is a great way to communicate what God said. Number three, what happens when we testify? The power of testimony. We inspire faith in others when we testify. When you tell somebody else what God has done in your life, faith rises up in their hearts. That God can do it for them if he's done it for you. You inspire faith. Your stories, your testimonies inspire faith in people. Several examples here in Mark 5, verses 18 through 20. Uh, when this demoniac, this man who had many demons, Jesus set him free. He said, Lord, I want to come with you. I want to stay with you. I want to just travel with you. What did Jesus tell him? He said in verse 18 of Mark 5, it says, When he got into the boat, he, had been, who, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and be began to proclaim in Decapolis, that means ten cities, all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. What did Jesus say? Hey, and so coming with me in the boat, you go and tell everybody what God has done for and the compassions he has had for you. People marvel. Same thing with the woman at the well of Samaria. As Jesus spoke to them, she was so touched. It says she left her water pot in John 4 verse 28. She went into the city and said to the people, come and see a man who's told me everything I ever did. I mean, she went and told them. The one thing that happened in her life, she went and told everybody. See a man who's, he did something for me. He told me what happened to me. And it says in verse 30, they went out of the city and they came to Jesus and Many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman. And Jesus spent a few days with them, 
Verse 40. And many more believed because of his own word. And now they had a personal encounter with Jesus. Your testimony can lead other people to a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen. When you tell them something, this woman did not know much. She had only one story. This man told me what happened in my life. Come and meet him. That was it. You may have one story. But God can use that one story to bring an entire community, bring many people to a personal encounter with him. One story. Amen. So your story can inspire faith in other people. Your story can cause other people to encounter Jesus Christ. And every act of the Lord reveals the ways of God. When you look, consider what God has done. It reveals something about who God is. Psalm 103 verse 7 talks about Moses and the people of Israel. God revealed his ways to Moses, his acts to the people. In other words, the people were just observing the acts. But Moses was learning about God, about the ways of God. The point is the, the acts of God reveal the ways of God. They reveal who God is, his nature, aspects of his, about his person. So when you talk about the works of the Lord, you're actually communicating something about the ways of God to somebody. They realize, hey, this is who God is. He is a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a provider. He's a miracle worker. When you talk about the work God has done for you, you're revealing something about God to somebody. Amen? And inspires faith. They believe it. Last two, number four. You release a prophetic word declaring what God will do for others. Your testimony actually becomes a prophetic word. Revelation 19 verse 10, as John was having his vision of the end times, it says there towards the end of, book, end of the book of Revelation, verse, chapter 19 verse 10, he says, I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of a prophecy. So John bows before this person who's showing him all these things, thinking he's some great person. But he says, don't worship me. I'm just one of your brethren. And I also have testimony. Meaning the Lord has done something in my life. I have a, the testimony of Jesus in my life. I'm just like one of you. So don't worship me. Worship Jesus. And then he tells him something very important. He says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Two things. When you testify about Jesus, you are releasing prophecy. The spirit of prophecy. You're releasing. Your testimony is a prophetic word to somebody. That God will do it for them. That's why I like that, this testimony that came in. We were talking about what God did for Anand and Kavita. But it became a prophetic word to somebody sitting in the audience. Are you listening? Somebody else's testimony became a prophetic word for somebody else in the audience. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. When you testify, you're releasing the spirit of prophecy. God is telling somebody else, that's going to happen for you. For you. For you. And then they grab a hold of it. God if you did it for them, I receive it for me. So think about this. Your testimony causes a release of the spirit of prophecy for somebody else. Amen. So share your testimony. You never know. When you are sharing your testimony, what God did in your life to somebody, it can become a prophetic word. God saying, I'm going to do the same thing for you. It may not be in the exact same way, but a similar situation, God says, I'll sort it out for you. I'll heal you. I'll deliver you. I'll do it for you. So your testimony has the potential to become a prophetic word, to release the spirit of prophecy for somebody else. Last one. The power of testimony. And we are familiar with this. In Revelation 12, verse 11, we overcome the enemy when we testify. It says there, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Can you imagine? 
Every time you testify, you tell somebody else, or you just speak about the works of the Lord, you're stepping upon the enemy. You are overcoming. You are putting yourself in a place of victory. They overcame the adversary by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They loved not their lives unto death. The Bible says in Psalm 107, verse 2, Let the redeemed of the Lord stay silent. It says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What has he redeemed you from? What has he delivered you from? What has he rescued you from? How has he worked in your life? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say it. So, to close. The power of testimony. Five outcomes. When you just tell your story. When you just tell somebody, hey, this is what God did for me. Now, you don't have to change your voice. You know, so you're drinking coffee with somebody and say, ah. <laughs> and King James Version starts coming out. Hey, just tell it normally. Simply, don't use high theological words. Just tell your story like you would tell any story. Hey, once I was going through this and this, but the Lord did something in my life. And if he did it for me, he can do it for you. And you know that when you testify, first, you're magnifying, you're exalting, you're glorifying God. You're saying, God, I'm thankful. You're expressing a heart of gratitude. It may be something 20 years ago, but you're still thankful today. Amen. Secondly, we are creating a memorial for ourselves and for other people. We're putting them in remembrance of God's goodness. We're reminding ourselves, and we, there are times when we need to be reminded. And the generation, other people also need to be reminded of God's goodness. Third, when we testify, we're inspiring faith in other people. Because every testament reveals an aspect of God. Every work of God reveals the ways of God. It reveals something about the nature of God. God's a good God. He has had, he's a compassionate God. So it inspires faith in somebody else. Fourth, you're releasing a prophetic declaration. It could become a prophetic word to them. Hey, if God did it for them, God is saying, I'll do it for you. Take it. Lastly, it's a kingdom way to walk in victory. God put it in place. You want to walk in victory? Testify. Talk about what God has done. A kingdom principle. Amen? So, testify. Talk to your friends. Talk to people. Whenever you get an opportunity, talk to people. Don't be afraid. Simple things. Somebody's talking to you about saying, you know, I have this and this problem. I have this and this condition. It may not be your own story, but it may be a story what God did for somebody else that you know. I mean, don't make up stories. <laughs> That's not the point. But you know a friend. You know somebody else that God has done something, similar situation. You can tell them, hey, I know of a friend. I know somebody else. So you can repeat somebody else's story. It's okay. It's the works of the Lord. You, may, you personally may not have had a same situation, but you know of a friend who had a situation. So you may say, you know, I had a friend, and this was his situation. But I am a witness of what I saw God do in his life. I saw, and when he prayed to Jesus, this is what happened for him. You're still a witness. You're still talking about the works of God, but it may be in somebody else's life, but you know for sure. You're just saying, this is what happened. I'm sharing that. That is also powerful. It'll inspire faith. It'll become a prophetic word for that person. It'll cause victory to come into somebody's life. Amen. Jesus said, you are my witnesses. You don't have the option to remain silent. We've got to tell what he's done in our lives. Go and tell everybody what the Lord has done for you. And our great compassions. 
he has had on you. Amen? Let's rise to our feet, please. We're going to just pray together. Let me close. Call our worship team up. Father, we just praise you, God, that you are a good God. And Lord Jesus, we know that everything you've done in the Bible, you will do it again and again and again and again, over and over again. And even this morning in this place, for people present right here, you will do your wonders. You will do your miracles. We ask that you will release healings and miracles for your people, God, in this place right now. Because you are the healer. You are the miracle worker. You are the bondage breaker. You are the deliverer. You are the one who sets us free. You are the liberator, the one who brings us out of every bondage, every addiction. You are the one who is our peace. You remove every confusion from our minds. You're the one who gives purpose, oh God. You remove any, every sense of hopelessness out of our lives. Jesus, you are the same today. We praise you. We honor you. We exalt you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. We praise you, Jesus. I now just, while I was just praying, I just... Well, people, you know, if there's somebody here who's got a problem in your back, and I think it's probably with your vertebrae, your discs, right there, probably your lower or middle back area, you've got problems with your vertebrae, with your disc, whatever the problem is, just put your hand right there. I want you to just receive your healing right now. Just put your hand right there. The Lord Jesus heals you right now. Right now. Also for those of these things that I just prayed over right now, for confusions in your mind, sense of hopelessness, purposelessness. If that may be you, you connect with what I'm saying. You say, God, I receive my freedom from that. I am not going to live under this weight of confusion, this emotional weight that goes right now in the name of Jesus. That lifts right now in the name of Jesus. That oppression over your mind causing you to be confused, living under a cloud of confusion not knowing which way to go, hopelessness, that lifts right now in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Receive it. Say, God, I receive that for me. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Father, we praise you. We honor you, Jesus. We bless your name. Thank you, oh God. We praise you. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. We honor you, Jesus. Thank you. We bless your name. Thank you. Father, we just pray that you meet the needs of people right here this morning. I just stand here to wait upon you for various needs in their lives. Meet the needs of your people, God. Thank you. That you are God, you're sovereign, you're powerful, you are mighty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you. Thank you. Thank you. As we worship God, I just want you to receive. I may not have mentioned it from here, but that's okay. That's God is your God. He hears and answers your prayer. Right where you are. But that's your healing. It's your miracle for a situation and intervention. You can receive. Just pray and receive. We worship for a few moments.
Father, we just thank you that you are great. And you do miracles, Lord, so great. A oh God, that you intervene supernaturally in our life situations. You're the God who works miracles. You're the God who sets things in place. You move things on our behalf, oh God. We just thank you, Father. We bless you, God. Thank you. I just want to release a word for someone who's in a family situation where you, there's strife. There are people fighting over. There's strife between family members and you are fighting over the same thing. You could be fighting over the same property and there is strife. And there's this fighting happening among your family, among your family members. You're fighting over the same thing. I'm saying it could be. You're fighting over property. But there's the strife at home among the family members. You're fighting over this. I just want to release God's intervention for you in the name of Jesus. That God will come through for you. He'll get every opposing person out of the way. And what is yours will be yours. And you don't have to worry. You don't have to fret over this. But I release God's intervention that things will be settled amicably, peacefully, quickly. And what is yours will be yours. I want you to receive this word right now as you're standing here. And saying, God, I received this. I'm in that situation. And I'm receiving this now. What is mine will be mine. I'm not going to fret over this. I'm not going to get into strife about this. But I'm receiving what you're saying right now. What is mine will be mine. Just receive that. Father, we thank you for your intervention in our life situations, God. Our situations, circumstances that you come through on our behalf. Thank you. We praise you. We honor you, Lord. Thank you. We give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Before we close, if there's anyone here this morning, you're visiting with us or you've come to church for the first time, you've never experience Jesus Christ in your life personally I want you to know that Jesus Christ is real he's God who came into this world he died for our sins on the cross so that we could be forgiven he was buried and he rose up again and he's alive today and if you'd like to personally experience Jesus personally know him in your life if you've never prayed and asked him to change you, set you free forgive your sins make you a child of God, if you've never done that before, I want to pray with you, just give you an opportunity to do that before we close this morning so there's anyone here, you've never done that before I invite you to pray this prayer with me, if you'd like to right now you can just say this with me, Lord Jesus I am a sinner I believe you died for me on the cross you were buried and that you rose up again. I ask you to come into my life. Forgive my sins. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. And help me to follow you the rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Anybody, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time this morning. If you did that for the first time this morning, I'd just like to ask you to please raise your hand. Anyone here, you did that for the very first time this morning. Just raise your hand. If you don't want to miss anybody here this morning. I don't see any hands. But if you prayed that prayer with me for the first time, you did it on your way out. There will be... Uh, our team, our volunteers there, they will have bags with them uh, and a card. Just tell them, I pray that prayer and they want to give you this free bag. It has resources in it that you can take back with you. Just write your name on the card that they have so we can be in touch with you and show you uh, and explain to you what to do next. All right, let's close. God bless.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Go be witness. Amen. Tell somebody what the Lord has done for you. Look what the Lord has done. God bless you. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website, apcwo.org, for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.